Joe, did you ever catch Do the Right Thing? Yeah, it's a 1989 movie directed and written by Spike Lee, who, honestly, I think this is his magnum opus. I think this is probably the best movie that he's done throughout his entire career. Everything else, I just... Guys, there's like two or three that are really fantastic, and this is amongst them, all right? So if you are unfamiliar with the film, it really highlights a lot of the racial tensions in New York in the late 80s. Once again, it was made in like 89. I saw this movie probably like a couple of years later when I was 11, 12 years old, and this is the scene where the pizza shop owner, you see famous pizzeria up there, um, he smashes Radio Rahim's radio. And so Radio Rahim is actually rather upset about it. And the following ensues. So throughout the course of the entire film, uh, you know, like I said, the racial tension, particularly with this pizzeria and the way many people of the community um, in this community here feels like the pizzeria is kind of racist and they're, they've been mistreated there and everything else. And what we're witnessing is a lot of that tension boil over. As you can see, uh, Radio Rahim is a rather big guy, and you know it, 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 he is not. He's his radio got smashed. All right, like, and here's the thing. Here's one of the more interesting elements to this is that you know the pizzeria owner uh, who smashed the radio. It, it, he had been. He'd had a problem. He'd asked him so many times, <laughs> so many times, and he was completely wrong for smashing the radio. Make absolutely no mistake about it. But there is an element of, you know, rudeness on Rahim's, on Radio Rahim's part, as in, you know, just completely ignoring, uh, ignoring this man's wishes, despite the fact that, you know, he has a business that he's trying to run. And while we're on the subject of, you know, these uh, pizzeria shops that were still around, the, like in the late 80s, as white flight was really taking place yeah the, a lot of those places were money laundering fronts for mobsters so can we not yeah yeah, yeah i i know that to be the case <laughs> let's keep going and if you are upset that hey jay you keep clicking it this is how i get over the fair use stuff guys this feel at all familiar to anybody particularly with you know the, the 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 tensions that ran high during the George Floyd thing like yo like you know stop stop choking him get off of his neck and the whole nine well Yeah, Gary is seriously having absolutely none of it. Gary is a awful human being, like without question. all agree that you know rioting and everything that's you know that's going to take place in the better part of this uh movie is completely it's it's not justified but at the same time it's far more empathetic than uh what took place with mr blake and that's a big part of the reason why you know the the film uh do the right thing's been on my mind as of late is because like i like i completely get it but you know the circumstances are just a million and three percent different. And this was back in like the late 80s. 
You know, so like we've been through 30 some change years since then. And one of the most irritating things in the world is seeing people like Spike Lee and the Ice Cubes like to pretend as if, you know, like these communities are still like, 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 are, like these, like this is the same circumstances that are in place today when in many cases it's not. I mean, even as this film came out, right, I had black cops in my, my school. I knew black cops by name. My mayor was a black woman. It's so to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, like things have just never progressed since then. And this is also oh terrible. And they haunting us, Mr. LeBron James. This is why we kneel. <laughs> Yo, bruh, no, no, it's not even close to how it was back then. See, so I wanted to really get into this because, like, honestly, and I, it's a part of the reason why I call it Spike Lee's magnum opus, really one of the best films that he did because if anything, like, if this is a time cap, this is a time capsule, if not anything else. You know, like, this is how really rough it had been in these communities for a long while up to that point. But things changed. You know, this was as the drug war was really going into effect and, you know, the whole gang culture and, you know, uh, the the uh, a lot of the, um, you know, they, they had this one song called uh, self-destruction. You're headed for self-destruction back back around that time. <laughs> and here we are 30 years. Everybody's still crying about these um, issues. And instead of actually focusing on the real root causes of these, the root causes have only gotten worse. They've only uh, multiplied. And it, you you don't even have situations quite like this anymore where, you know, there's it, there it, it's clear cut that, yeah, these that that officer, partic particularly Officer Gary. Yeah, that. Yep. Oh, by all means, what we're about to witness is kind of had they had it coming. Yeah, man. That was back when community actually meant something. Everybody had hella love for Radio Raheem. It, you should really go check out the film. It, it is a it is a pretty good movie. It, like like I said, it's probably Spike Lee's best. <laughs> Just like Michael Stewart. Murder. Eleanor Bumpers. Murder. Damn, man. They ain't safe in the whole fucking neighborhood. Oh, uh, Martin. What's up, my guy? This is young Martin. This is like, uh, you know, house party Martin. But either ways, you know, you can see they're rattling off the names. How familiar is all of this, guys? How familiar is all this? And the difference is, is that instead of it being actual descendants, as it would be here in New York at this time, that's well, Stuyvesant Avenue. Um... <laughs> It's uh, it's a whole bunch of people pretending as if you know these scenarios are equivalent. It's a whole bunch of you know it's 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 it's, it's a multi patchwork of people who've come together to you know pretend as if this like like, like this it, this remains as relevant as it was back then. But the deal is, is that no, it isn't. <laughs> like like the, the like all the problems like a lot of the problems yeah they've accelerated but at the hands of many of the people who now cry oh my goodness like you know not not at the hands of but at the um uh, like like take ice cube right ice cube he we be coming you know like uh, 
<laughs> like, like he was part of NWO. These, uh, like, you know, they fought for a lot of freedom of speech, true enough, but at the same time, they helped usher in a large portion of the quote unquote gangster culture and, you know, uh, dealing and everything else like that. So it's like, bro, like, I mean, you guys, over the past 30 years, you've made millionaires out of yourselves by exploiting this exact same problem while the root causes, such as the drug war and the lack of, you know, um, economic mobility in these communities uh, remain. So, bruh like i mean you, you and you have your black mayors you have black police you have everything that you uh, that you were asking for at the time so to sit here and pretend as if oh yeah you know i mean here like th like now was then is bullshit never was never will be we ain't gonna stand for this shit no more sal you hear me we ain't gonna stand for yo shout out to robin harris man like baby's kids he was he was hilarious he was also in harlem nights that was a fantastic film from back in that day as well fucking police punk it's as plain as day they didn't have to kill the boy <laughs> damn spike you got old yo man but you know hold on let's uh Let's just lead back. Let's just get to the point because uh, Sal, who they're talking to, that's the pizzeria owner. And once again, um, like quick recap, he's the same guy that uh, he he's the one who had, uh, you know, the police called. He was the one that, you know, smashed Raheem's radio. And so the and and it justify his, like his, his but his viewpoint his vantage point is actually justifiable due to the whole business angle and uh, Spike Lee character worked for Sal for the longest so you know he's gonna have to have that Mac uh, <laughs> he's gonna have to have his moment of you know sparking the sparking the rebellion sparking the revolution let's go. always reminded of that scene in um the boondocks where uh riley goes all you gotta do is throw a chair and everybody going wild out yeah all you gotta do is throw something something just gotta get into the air and knock something down and here we go any of this feel familiar guys like seriously, you know, we'll turn the the, the what's name down because I'm just about done here. Any of this feel familiar? Because this is, you know, like this is the results, and it's far more clear cut in you know this fictional story than the real world will ever be. But ultimately, what do they accomplish? Right? I mean, what what to this day, what what's become of Harlem? Just saying. Anyways, guys, yeah, uh, like with uh, everything taking place right now, I just figured this was a good, uh, let's see, hey, hey, you know, yeah, good old my man in the hat. He played in a lot of stuff, uh, but yeah, you definitely, like, they're not attacking him, like, they're just going after his, his pizzeria, his pizza shop, but, you know, it, it's still nonsense. It's still destroying something within your, within your own community. And so, guys, with that being said, we're going to bring this one to an end. All the internet stuff. If you liked it, toss it a like, dislike. Go ahead, do that too. Nobody's scared of you. Sub. And you join my fantastic voice. You want to get videos like this every single day? Share because sharing is caring. And YouTube and bitch, you don't like aren't the biggest fans of your boy over here for very obvious reasons. Bang the bell for notifications. Get something from the Teespring store and speak. Let me know. What do you guys think in the comments? The more things, like the more cyclical they try, things are, right? Like, like it, it all runs in cycles. And in this cycle, there's a lot of, you know, um, like anger and, and, and resentment that it really ha doesn't have the exact same basis that doesn't have the same basis. It, that's pretending it has the basis as the murder of a radio Raheem. But once you take a second and think about it, it's like, wait, no, like even the murder of radio Raheem was completely on uh, like, like, uh, like this right after the uh, murder of radio Raheem is completely uncalled for. But. You know, it is what it is. They, like, at least they were getting the pound of flesh from the from the store owner that had actually done something to them as opposed to complete strangers and just wilding out 
for the sake of it, for the hell of it, burning things down with uh, because you know, oh my goodness, we's being hunted. It's, it hasn't been like this for like 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 generally speaking, particularly in urban spaces, it hasn't been this way for a while. But you may disagree, and that's what I have a comment section for. All right, and if I've encouraged you to go check out, do the right thing. Well, by all means. Get on me, right? So <laughs> well, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And until the next one.